Hey team, Dr. Jack Gordy here, and today I'm going to take you through agar plates and the Koch postulates. Now, Koch is German, so I'm roughly trying to pronounce it as good as I can, Koch. But what I might do is call it Koch. Um, from now on, that's an incorrect pronunciation, but it's how it's spelled. So uh, let's just go with Koch uh, for now, because I'm I can't keep that German pronunciation up forever. Right. So Koch postulates. Okay. So Robert Koch was a German. Con contemporary scientist of Pasteur. So he was around the same time as Louis Pasteur, um, but he was an absolute legend. And he sort of developed this whole technique that we call agar plates. So it started with slicing potatoes. Now that sounds weird. He would slice potatoes and then he would sterilize uh, a loop of metal and swab um, a wound from an infected patient, for example. And he would rub it across the potato and he would see the growth of individual colonies of bacteria. Now this is important. In a wound there might be lots of different kinds of bacteria but if you streak it really dilutely um, across the potato skin um, you can actually spread it out to the point that a single bacteria will start to drop off what you're scraping and that single bacteria will turn into a colony and so you can end up with individual colonies of individual species of bacteria. So you can break it up by species. But Koch was not happy with the potato. The potato broke down, it also grew its own bacteria, it wasn't sterile, um, uh, it wasn't ideal, a film of liquid fo would form a pot upon it, and often molds would grow, so he wasn't happy with the potato slice and he wanted to improve it. The first thing he went to was gelatin. Now gelatin is a protein based thing and we use it to make jelly, so obviously it makes these lovely uh, delicious uh, uh, jiggly things but it's disgusting. This is how we make jelly. We take um, skin and, and bones and joints and we boil it up and that solubilizes all the proteins that are in these joints. Um, all the proteins that are in here in the cartilage here get solubilized into the liquid and then we evaporate the liquid off and we end up with gelatin crystals. Now proteins are long molecules so um, when the, if, if they're in high enough concentration they tangle with each other forming a 3D mesh and that 3D mesh filled with liquid is what creates that jelly like thing. Now the problem with using jelly was first of all at warmer temperatures and when bacteria grow they can release temperatures, they can increase in temperature and sometimes you want to grow bacteria in warmer temperatures like 37 degrees, um, they can turn back into a liquid. The other thing is bacteria can release proteases which are enzymes that break down proteins so the jelly can turn back to liquid. So it wasn't going great for Robert Koch agar, Robert Koch's agar plates. Um, until the wife of one of his students was making jams and she was using agar to make her jams more rigid. Um, now agar is, works on the exact same principle as jelly but it's carbohydrate based so instead of long proteins that tangle together it's long carbohydrates that tangle together and these carbohydrates are extracted from seaweed um, and the bacteria don't produce many enzymes that can break down this plant carbohydrate plant-based bacteria and so it created these perfect agar plates. Now Koch originally put them in these really heavy bell jars until one of his uh, students uh, whose last name was Petri discovered that these glass dishes could work and that's where the Petri dish came from um, and he was one of Koch's uh, students. Um, but it was great because uh, agar had a higher melting temperature than the protein based gelatin and it was not digested by the bacteria. So now he had these agar plates on which to research the bacterial origins of disease. And this is where Koch postulates um, could be amazing. So Koch can now isolate and grow pure cultures. So say you take that mixed culture, you scrape it across the agar plate, you end up with these individual colonies here, and each of those colonies could be a different species of bacteria. You can then take that species and scrape it on a new agar plate, and now you have, will have a pure culture of just that bacterial species. So Koch developed this technique and he, what he wanted to do was he believed in the germ theory. The germ theory did not have the final nail in the coffin. Yes, you could sterilize equipment and not get disease. It wasn't 100% sort of that, that high level of evidence that we need. And Koch came up with the Koch postulates, which was a specific method 
to prove to do everything you could but prove in science we never prove um, but almost find irrefutable evidence for germ disease and the concept that the bacteria causes the disease and this is how it goes you must isolate a bacterial culture from a diseased organism and um, this microbe that you propose causes the disease must be in high abundance in that organism. So here we have a mouse with an infected ear. You must be able to take that infected ear and show that there is a lot of a certain kind of bacteria in that infected ear. Um, the microbe should be isolated and grow in pure in culture. So using that transfer technique I talked about, you should be able to create a pure culture of one type of bacteria, and that bacteria should be isolated from the wound and thought to be the cause of the disease, or isolated from the organism. It doesn't have to be a wound. Um, the culture, um, uh, bacteria or whatever organism, organism it is that's growing on that agar plate should then be able to be administered to the organism and cause that disease. So you should be able to take this pure culture that you isolated from this mouse, inject it into a healthy mouse, for example, he used many different kinds of animals, and show that it causes that disease. Um, the microbe should then be re-isolated from the now diseased animal. So you should be able to then take this diseased animal and find that isolate, right? So if you propose that a certain bacteria causes a certain disease, it should cause the wound, be able to be isolated, should be able to then be administered and then cause the disease again, and then you should be able to isolate it again. Triple sort of providing really high levels of evidence that the bacteria cause this disease. Now I've used the word proved here, and you shouldn't really ever use the word proved in science, but if anything was proved, it's as close to this, right? This is the highest level of evidence science has ever got, so this is as close as we get to proved. So Koch was an absolute legend. He proved that anthrax, the disease, was caused by Bacillus anthropis. Um, he then showed tuberculosis was caused by a mycobacterium. He then went to Egypt and went to India to prove that cholera was caused by a bacteria as well. Um, and so when you think about all these things that he discovered, he essentially put that final nail in the coffin, proving that as close to the word prove as we can use in science, providing the highest level of evidence that these bacteria do cause these diseases. And so indeed it is germ theory. He also did lots more, but that's all I'm going to cover on Robert Koch. He's an absolute legend, um, and he really did put that final icing on the cake to really seal the deal for germ theory over miasma theory.